Mr. Chairman, and thank you for the hearing this morning. Um, I think it is somewhat telling that um, with everything that is happening this morning, there is a significant overflow room just down the hall. Uh, I've been back and forth between a couple different committee hearings this morning, and there continues to be a line of young people, of young people trying to get into this committee hearing. And so I've stopped and talked to them. Why are you standing in this line today? Why is it important to you? And uh, one of the young men said, it's personally important to me. I'm, I'm curious to know, uh, as a, apparently as a young immigrant, um, the intersection, the services that are available uh, for those in, in, uh, from other areas. Um, another one indicated that uh, she was interested in, in education, but she wanted to understand more how people who had had um, adverse um, incidents in their lives as young, young kids as she had, what more support could be provided in schools. Young people are paying attention to this as an issue. They're paying attention to what we as legislators do. And I've listened to some of my colleagues, and yeah, we can't, we can't legislate loneliness going away. It's hard enough to, how do you legislate against bullying? How, how do we do the reach out? I appreciated your comments to Senator Tupperville when he mentioned that as a coach, he interacted directly with these young people and your comment that you sat down at round tables with, with students, particularly student athletes. What more are we doing to ask young people what the solutions are? We had a hearing in this, um, in the Help Committee last year on youth mental help, uh, we invited an extraordinary young Alaskan by the name of Claire Rainier. I think Claire at the time was 19. Um, she gave testimony and presented uh, the youth perspective and what she had done as one individual that had gone through real crisis, what she had done within her school community to, to engage more. And I, I, I remember Claire's story and how strong she was in sharing that with us. But what are we doing to ask the young people what we can do to help? And I'll, I'll, I'll throw that out to you, um, Surgeon General. Well, thanks so much, Senator. And I Lekowski. understand you're coming to Alaska soon, and I am. those conversations are going to take place. Thank you. Yes, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And um, it's actually relevant. Like When I first came to Alaska, when you and I met there in 2016, um, that was an opportunity actually. We did a lot of roundtables, including with young people. And the goal there was to really understand how they're being impacted by substance use disorders and more broadly by behavioral health concerns. Uh, to involve young people to answer your question, I think there are a few things we have to do and that we are doing more and more of. Number one is we've got to bring young people to the table to understand and hear their concerns and go to where they are. And so that's part of what my office has been doing is having roundtables with young people in communities across the country. The second thing we have to do... Can I just stop you there? Of course. Because it takes extraordinary strength for a young person to say, no, I'm gonna, I want to be part of this public yeah, dialogue yep. and engagement. The ones that, that are really hurting are the ones that are just struggling to get up out of bed that morning, much less go to a round table. How do we get them? That's exactly right. And that, that's why what we're also doing is recognizing that it's not easy for everyone to come to those tables to be open. It's easier often when they are doing that with l folks they know, with trusted institutions, trusted organizations. So we're also working with faith organizations, with universities and others to help them pull roundtables and other such listening sessions together with young people to create opportunities for them to give input that don't necessarily involve showing up at a round table, but may involve more commenting on a survey or sharing their input anonymously. We want to create as many channels as possible for young people to be heard on this. And then using that input, uh, we're encouraging mayors as well as the institutions I mentioned to then formulate their plans. Um, my belief is that if we want to do something that's going to help young people here, we need them at the table throughout the process before we develop the solution, as we work on execution, and when we do evaluation to understand whether it's working or not. Uh, and th that, that is what we are encouraging localities to do, from mayors to non-governmental organizations like YMCAs, in, you know, educational institutions and others. Um, but Senator, it, it's not, I'll just say this, it, it's not easy uh, to do this, right? It takes time, effort, and focus, and, and continued attention. Uh, the easiest thing is just to go into a closed room and to come up with your own solutions and try to implement them. But I just don't think that that is what's going to get us the best result here. 
Agreed. Recognize that we just need to be doing more to be inclusive of, of these young people. I'm going to have a question for the record for, for you, um, uh, Mrs. Ness, and this is relating to uh, the fact that of the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act funding through the, through the Mental Health Services Grant, uh, Professional Demonstration Grant programs, apparently uh, only 17% of these grants were awarded to rural districts, mm -hmm. and so I'm trying to understand um, what more we can be doing to make sure that these, these grant resources are going out to all areas of, of the country, including rural. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much.